Hello everybody, my name is Markiplier, and welcome to a sewing tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the free pattern that was released called the Sequoia Jacket on the Smart Doll website. Now, I may not be an extremely experienced sewist, but I did my best, and I'm going to try and help you guys through it. Okay, so these are some of the things that uh, you're going to need to use while making this jacket. You're gonna need some zipper stuff. Uh, this one is thrifted, it's just connected at the bottom. A pen or a fabric marker, fabric scissors, paper scissors, and a ruler just for support, I suppose. And some buttons. Okay, we're going handheld for this. Um, so you're gonna need six buttons in total. Whoa. Uh, all my buttons are thrifted, so not all of them will be the same. We go back to the jacket here there's some little white buttons there's this this so not all of them are the same but i think they still look nice so you can do this on a budget if you go thrifting and you find some buttons that you like ignore my nail polish so you're gonna need six buttons they could be whatever size you want preferably a little bit small um compared to human buttons but six buttons they don't have to match, they can look however you want, you just need six of them. Last but not least, you are going to need the pattern pieces. So when you're printing these, make sure that they're printing at 100%. And once they're printed on each sheet, I already have these cut out because I've made the jacket before, but on each full sheet of paper, there will be a small 10 centimeter reference. So you can tell if it was printed full size or not. Um, some of mine, when I printed it 100%, it, like, printed off the page, so I had to kind of extend it to the best of my knowledge, but I think it turned out fine. So, print all those out, cut all those out with your paper scissors, and we're good to go! So, the jacket that I showed you guys in the beginning of the video, I made with completely thrifted supplies. So, you can do this on... A crazy budget if you need to you do not have to splurge on very expensive supplies the only things that I bought brand new were the thread and the snaps that I used for the jacket so here is the fabric I'm gonna be using today and it is an old curtain that my mom didn't like so she gave it to me and it's kind of a little thick a little bit thinner than denim, about as thick as the material I used for the jacket I showed you in the beginning. And I do believe it's a sort of denim that is used in the original Smart Doll Sequoia jacket, but I'm, I, I'm not 100% sure. So this is what I'm going to be using today, and now that you have all your pattern pieces cut out, we will be putting those on the fabric and cutting out all the pieces that we need. The heater's on. Um, and the vent is 100% open and right above my workspace. So that plus the candle for the vibes, for the vibes. So for all of the pattern pieces that say times two, you need two of them. And to cut them out, you lay it down like this, trace it, cut it, and then you flip it like that, trace it, and cut it. So that you have two pieces that are mirroring each other. All right, so now that you have all your pieces cut out, lay the, th the four back pieces out in front of you. You should have the one top back piece, 
the one middle back piece, and then two mirroring side back pieces. Now you can take these pattern pieces and put them aside for now because we don't need them anymore. For now, push aside the right back side piece and the back top piece so that we can focus on the middle and the left side. So you're going to lay them together like I do in the video, good side to good side, and then you're going to sew along to attach them. Now if you have a serger, this would probably be the best thing to use, but I don't so I just use a special setting on my sewing machine. Always make sure uh, that your seam lines are matching up with the pattern piece, which is a quarter of an inch. I measure mine just like this. And now that we have those sewn together like here, add the second piece. So now that you've sewn or serged these three back pieces together, it is time to top stitch. So you fold these inward like that so that when you're on the outside, the top stitch is on the middle piece. All right, we did it. These three pattern pieces can be put aside and pat yourself on the back because the back of the coat is pretty much done. Oh. Now we are going to put this aside and move on to the front. Okay, so for the front, you're gonna need the left front piece, left front side, the right front piece, and the right front side. We're gonna need more later, but for now, these four pieces are all you need. All right, so let's put the right sides aside and start with the left pieces. So put them good side to good side like this and line them up, sorry, like this, line them up and get them all pinned. Alright, so now that these two pieces, the left two pieces of the front have been sewn together, we're going to need to top stitch, and the top stitch, as you can see, is on the front piece. So you're going to make sure this flap goes this way towards the front piece, and then you're going to just top stitch all along here. Okay, so now that the two left front pieces are top stitched and sewn together, do the exact same thing with the right side. All right, so now that our two front pieces of the jacket are put together and ready to go, we're gonna focus on the pockets. So here, you can see, not the best, but these are the two, like, hand pockets. And then there's a flap here, which we'll focus on after the pockets, and then there's this pocket. So the pockets are definitely one of the more difficult parts of this jacket, but they're definitely not impossible. They're very similar to the jean pockets. So let's put the breast pocket to the side for now, and let's focus on these, like, they're the side pockets. So there's going to be one on each side of the jacket. And so for this side, you'll cut the two pieces out like this, and then for this side, you flip them over like that and cut the two pieces out like that. 
All right, so with your pocket pieces, you're going to see on the pattern piece here, it has this little zigzag. So do a like zigzag surged kind of end on these ends of the pockets. So that would be this end here and this end here and then this end here and this end here. All right, so now that you've done the little zigzag on the edge pieces of these pockets, we are going to do the top stitching here. So on this big one and this big one. So put these to the side and we're gonna fold this over like that and top stitch it down. Fold it over to match with the seam allowance here. So if you need to, you can line it up like this and then just poke a um, pin through it and then take the paper off and you'll know where to fold. So as you can see on the paper pattern piece, it has the top stitch marking all the way down and then it has this little rectangle, which you can see on the pocket here. So what you can do is you can line this, you can fold this first to make it a little easier. And you can line this up with your piece, just like that. And make sure you have a pin marking the start and the end of the little rectangle or you can take a little fabric marker and just do a little dot so that you know where it is. Okay, so I have my two pins on the top of the piece that mark where that little rectangle starts. So we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to do one straight line down first. Alright, so now that we've top stitched down this side of the pocket, we're gonna go back up until our first pin. I'll line it up properly, I don't want it to look horrible. <laughs> All right, so I'm just about at my first pin. I'm gonna pop that out. And then I'm gonna turn my piece, so it's facing this way, and I'm gonna go forward about three stitches. You can go more or less depending on what you want, but I found that three lines up with this a little bit better. After that, you turn it this way, and so I have my top stitch here lining up at the very end of my foot, so I'm gonna keep that there, and I'm gonna go all the way to my second pin. Now I'm at my second pin, I'm going to take that out, and then I am going to go this way, three stitches, and then I'm just going to follow my previous stitch back down. Now as you can see here, I didn't exactly go on my main line, but it doesn't take away from the design, so don't worry too much if you're not exactly on the line and do this process for the other pocket piece for this pocket piece this is the what is it the the left side left side um and the pattern piece is for the right side so hopefully that doesn't confuse you too much but there you can see the little rectangle and now to move on to the other pocket Alright, 
So now that we have our pockets designed up and top stitched, we are going to attach them to the base piece. So we're gonna start with these, the, these, <laughs> and put these two aside for now. So let me grab, let me put this one aside so I can actually use the proper piece here. All right, so now that we have this, we don't have to do anything more to this side. We just have to figure out where it lands on here. So how I do that is I take this pen and piece and I line it up here so that it mostly lines up. And then I take a pin, grab one here, and I try and poke it through the back, sorry, <laughs> poke it through the back at the, at the major the little points here, like a little constellation. Okay, it's so much easier with my right hand, <laughs> sorry. All right, make sure it's lined up. I go behind. Pick it through there. And then one at the bottom here. And then I just lift this off and you have the markings. Now this is a little dangerous, so if you don't want to do that, you can just poke holes in the pattern piece and go over it with a pen. Poke a little pen through and have little dots on your fabric. Now if you do that, it will be covered by the pocket. Or if you'd prefer to just use this, that works too. So now... We're gonna look at this and see, this is, I think it's a quarter inch. I knew my ruler would come in handy. Let's see here. Yeah, quarter inch. So you can eyeball it if you want, that's always what I do, or you can measure it. But let's start with this long side here. So I'd say that's about a quarter inch. On each side, I'm gonna fold this in about a quarter inch. Yes, yeah, so let's fold that in. And then, when you think you've got it, pin it. And then you can hold this up to the edge and see I got it pretty close there. So now here I'm gonna put this back and I'm gonna line, I'm actually gonna flip this so you can see it better. I'm gonna line it up about a half inch from here. Okay, that's much better. All right, so this end it's about a half inch. You can measure it if you like. Pretty good at eyeballing it. And then I'm just gonna make sure the other end of the fabric lines up with the edge of that. And then I'm going to pin it in place. I find it easier to pin it from the outside. So that's what I do. Oh my God, ow, Jesus Christ. If only there was a thimble for your whole hand. And then I'm gonna take out these pins. Ow, oh my god. Being fucking attacked. I'm gonna remove the back two pins here. And then you can continue to remove the pins you use to pin your fold and use them to attach this. But for now, I think two is all right. So now this is going to be this, oh sorry, this is going to be this top corner here. So I'm going to fold that under until it meets up with this hole. So it's going to fold. Okay, that's a crazy big fold. But it is going to fold like this. That somehow feels wrong. 
but it is not. Okay. So you fold this top piece so it lines up with the base of your pin. And then I'm going to pin the corner piece to the jacket. And then I'm just going to pin right there. Now I'm going to remove the... Ooh, I'm not going to remove this, actually. I'm going to fold this in to line up roughly with the edge of that pin. And then I'm going to pin that in place. And then I'm going to remove the back pin. Now this one, I realize I should not have removed that one pin, but it's about a half inch. So I'm going to fold this in or a quarter inch, so I'm going to fold this in about a quarter inch. Make sure it's nice and folded how I like it. And then I'm going to make sure that that lines up. Just kind of feel for it, yeah. And I'm going to pin that. Not with this pin, because it's bent. Okay. You're going to leave this zigzag part open. I like to, I think I did it on, no, I didn't do it on this. See, this flap is just open. You can keep it open so you can have stuff in there, but I'm gonna sew it down. I think you can do it either way um, because it's covered by this top pocket. But for now, we are just gonna focus on top stitching around these edges. All right, so now that this piece is attached, which is this piece, we are going to be attaching this piece, which is this piece. So if we look here, you can see this has a huge seam space here, which is if we measure it, I thought it was a centimeter is one half of an inch. So double the normal seam allowance because it goes, it tucks under this piece. So in the end, it'll look like this. So that when your doll is reaching in the pocket, you don't see the ugly little zigzag, this piece here. So, mm -hmm going to just place that there roughly where I think it is and then just like that you can do this and poke your little holes and put your piece on or where did I put that or you can do what we did for this piece and you can put that layer this on and then poke through the back Okay, so I realize this, these pieces can be a little bit confusing as to where they match up on the two pieces. So if you're having a bit of trouble, what I do is I fold this in about a quarter inch, and this side in about a quarter inch as well, and I lay it on how much I want it to cover that bottom piece, just like that. And then I pin that before I pin anything else. And then I use my two pins here as a rough marker. So now that the pockets are, or the front pocket piece it is pinned in place as close as possible to line up with the holes that we marked, now it is time to top stitch along this edge here, down here, and along to here. All right, so now that you've attached both, your side pocket here is finished. Can look inside there all nice and clean and now to move on to the other side editing maddie here the amount of times that i say all right or all right so in the video is insane i'm just really nervous i've never done a tutorial video before and i guess that is my coping mechanism you could turn into a drinking game if you want to but you don't have to all right so now that we have the pockets on um, as best as you can. They are a little difficult. I've got this one a little bit close to the edge, um, more so than this one, but I think I should be able to 
work with it. Now we are going to move on to the breast pocket, which goes on this piece. So we're going to put this piece to the side for now. I'm going to work on this. So you're going to need a little zipper bit. Now the original jacket that you can buy from the store has a functional zipper. I do not have the tools to make this zipper functional, so I'm just going to be using this little piece. But if you can and know how to make your zipper functional, by all means, absolutely do that because it adds to the jacket. But for now, I'm going to be using this little bit. So cut these two pieces out and meet me back here. Okay, so now that our pieces are cut out and we have our little zipper here, um, in order to fold and hem this or top stitch this side, I'm just gonna go in here and make a teeny little snip right in the corner there on both sides. This way it can fold in just like that. What we're gonna do is sew along this edge here, top stitching to secure the zipper. All right, so now that the zipper is inserted, we are gonna deal with this little foldy thing. So what I do is I line it up real close with my piece and then you can use a fabric marker or just a pen and I mark those three little lines. Now that those lines are marked, I line this up as best I can with the piece, put through the back here and try and match it up with this top little hole here and then you can leave the pin there or make just a teeny little mark now you're gonna take the furthest little mark and the other furthest little mark and match them up and then let that fold so that the little fold is on the inside there and it matches up with the little dot that you can kind of see. And then pin that and top stitch it down all the way up until the little dot. Okay, zipper is attached. This little fold has been dealt with. So this piece is pretty much done. So now we're gonna take this piece and attach it to this. So we're gonna fold it half an inch in. Okay, so it's pinned, folded in half inch in. And we're gonna line it up with our piece here, just like this. And then I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna take the pin out and I am going to pin it in place. Ooh. And I'm gonna pin it in place connected to this piece. Okay, so now that it's all pinned together, you're gonna top stitch along here all the way down to this side. All right, so now that your pocket is looking like this, it's all top stitched down. If you do have a functional zipper, you should be able to open it. If not, that's fine. Looks like this on the back. We are going to attach it in the same way that we did this. So take the pattern pieces, either this piece or this front piece, line it up with the edges and then poke through from behind at each point and then line this up with those make sh making sure to fold under for top stitching. Finally, pockets on. Now we can forget about the pocket pieces. So now that we've got the pockets top stitch on, I popped the zipper so I could get in there with my little thingy. Uh, anyways, we are going to do the flap. This bad boy right here. So it goes on this piece, and what I like to do is I like to finish the flap, and then I just sew it on really roughly to this piece, just so that when you're sewing this piece to the back piece, you don't have to worry about this piece being kind of in between, if that makes any sense. So we are going to get onto this, grab your little shoulder flap piece, and move me back here. Editing Maddie again. Sorry if the audio is bad. My heater is on and that's the vent. So it's right above me, but I need to say this. The pattern piece for the flap 
says times two, meaning you should cut two pieces out, right? My fucking dumbass didn't cut out two pieces either times that I made the jacket. So what you're supposed to do is you cut out two pieces that are mirroring each other, sew them good side to good side, and then flip, flip that inside out. Uh, like you sew it good side to good side on the two straight edges. I hope this is making sense. And then you flip it inside out and then you top stitch those straight edges. And what I did is I took one piece and I just flipped the edges in and top stitched it. So on, on the top it'll look the same, but I hope what I just said made some kind of sense. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, as you can see here the, with the dotted lines, we're gonna top stitch along these edges. We're gonna fold them in, just like that, and top stitch it. So we're gonna fold this side, and then this side, and top stitch that down. Okay, so now that we have this piece top stitched, we are going to add the little snap. So you can use this, line it up to your piece, and do that poking thing like we did before, or you can just eyeball it, whatever you want. All right, so now that we've sewn on our snap, we need to cover up this ugly bit. Now, this whole process of sewing on the snap and putting something on top of it can be completely ignored if you have those snaps, like on the original Sequoia jacket, but I do not, so I have to kind of makeshift it. So I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna take some super glue. You could probably use fabric glue, whatever you want. I'm a little cookie crazy. Just glob a bunch onto those threads. Wrap that back up. And then I put my little button on top. Let that dry, and then you've covered your snap. So all I'm doing for the other half of the snap is I'm lining this pattern piece up with my jacket, and then I'm gonna poke a hole through and sew on the other side of the snap here. Okay, so this next step is entirely optional, um, but I find it just helps me keep track of things. I just pinned, so I added the snaps, snapped those together, and then I just pinned this piece along this side of the front, and I'm just going to do a quick top stitch tightly around the very edge of that, just to keep it secure where it is. Congratulations! The two front pieces are almost done. And the back piece is done. Look at that. You're pretty much finished. This is the end of the video. Figure it out by yourselves. I'm just kidding, obviously. Um, so all we have to do for the front pieces is add the lining and the zipper. And then we're ready to move on and attach these three together. Oh, but first... Get over here! You look, we did it. Three pieces. The front of the jacket, the back of the jacket. We're about 50-60% done, if I had to guess, though I'm not very smart, so that could be completely off. Uh, go take a break. Go kiss your cat on the head. Go give him a couple little pats. If you don't have a cat, go find one and give it a couple kisses and pats on the head. All right, so now you have to take your two lining pieces. I believe they're called the facing, the front facing pieces and do a little locking stitch like it says on the pattern there, the little zigzag, just to make sure it doesn't fray too much at least. Grab your zipper and I'm not gonna do much explaining of what I'm doing here. It kind of speaks for itself. So I'm just gonna let you guys Watch me fold the zipper and I think I sew hand sew it in place real quick. Um, you're that's pretty much it. So I did that with both sides of the zipper just so that it curved into the jacket when we sew it on, which you will see now. So this next part coming up is pretty simple in theory, but it is a little tedious. What I'm showing and what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it like you are top stitching it and you're gonna place it on top of the zipper so that it looks like the zipper is a part of the jacket and then you're gonna do the same thing with the lining or the facing interfacing piece so that they're both like folded and the zipper is coming out of them so you can't really see the zipper from the inside. 
I'll cut to show you what that looks like now. So what I did is I pinned the front piece on as if I were about to top stitch it and then I went and I started to pin the back piece on just like I'm doing here. Now the jacket should look something like this with both pieces folded and encasing the zipper and now you can top stitch that down. Alright, so now that you have both sides of the zipper attached, the front pieces are finished. They should look something like this. Mine, I left these ends here so that I can wait until we add the final end piece onto this. So just a little bit at the end will do. And we're ready to attach these to our back piece. Alright, so here we have our back piece and our two front pieces and we're going to attach them. So good side to good side, we're going to take this piece with the breast pocket. And we're going to put it like this and line this end up with this. Just like that. And then we're going to sew that together. Okay, so now that I have these two pieces pinned, good side to good side, I'm going to sew across just like this with one of these kinds of stitches. And then I'm going to do the exact same to the other side with this piece. Alright, so the amalgamation should look something like this now with the two front pieces like this attached to the back piece. Now what we're going to do is make sure that this seam is facing this way and we're going to top stitch along the back piece right there on both sides. All right, here is the top stitch, what the top stitch should look like. And now we have the base of our jacket. Next, we are going to lay the jacket out like this like this oh my fucking god okay like this so that we can use the upper back pattern piece to look at the equalette and so i'm just gonna line it up like this and i'm going to take you could take a fabric marker or you can do like we did before with the pins i'm just gonna take a little pen and make a teeny little mark on these two lines, marking that on my jacket. All right, so now that we have our two equalette pieces, that's what I'm gonna be calling them, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, we are going to fold them good side to good side, matching these points, and then we're gonna pin them in place, and we're gonna go with our machine just along here to here so a little v you can mark it if you want that's what i like to do it helps me kind of visualize where i'm sewing and we're just gonna sew like i said that little v okay so now that we've sewn this just like that little v we are going to trim this down just a little bit like that and we're gonna flip it right side out and then fold these two sides inward and once you've got that all folded and pushed out pin it in place and top stitch all along this side and down this side all right now we have both of our equalettes sewn top stitched up ready to go and we're gonna forget about these and put them to the side for now. Okay, we're gonna open up our big jacket piece, like this, and we're going to attach the shoulder patches. So you should have two of these, like this, mirroring each other. And these, the F and B stand for front and back, as far as I know. And you're just gonna line it up here you can look at the um, original pattern pieces for these. Let me grab those and line it up like this. And you can see this SP here. And there's these two lines here that matches up with the SP here and the two lines here. So you can mark those out um, and mark them on here to attach them. Or you can just eyeball it, whatever suits your fancy. So now that you have this piece lined up where it should be, we are going to fold in this edge, this long edge, and this edge, and we're going to top stitch it down. 
Okay, so I want to show you what it looks like once it's pinned before I top stitch it. I've got both sides on. This kind of ends just a little bit into the back piece. This overlaps the pocket a little bit. And now off to top stitching. All right, so these side patches, these shoulder patches are now top stitched on. You can see just top stitched on here. And we're ready to bring back the equalettes. I hope that I'm saying that right. Please. <laughs> um, so we're going to add the little snap here. Like, just like I added the snap for this piece. So we're going to look at the back, back yoke piece. We're going to lay it down right here, lining it up with your back piece. And then you can see there that this is where the snap will connect. So you can pin through it from the back. If I can do this, Bop. and you can do the same thing for the other side, which I will be doing. Perfect. And then taking this off. So that's where the snap is going to be. And I'm going to mark that with a pen. and remove the pins. Then I'm gonna take this piece again, I'm gonna line it up with the back piece, and I'm gonna use it as a guide as to where these go. We did mark under this on here. We have two marks for where it lines up. And boom, it's gonna look like that. So, first, we're going to keep these equalettes to the side, and we're going to sew on the bottom snaps onto the back piece first. Okay, so I have the snaps sewn onto the back piece, and I also went ahead and sewed on the other side of the snap to the equalettes, and I glued on my little button, just like we did for the flap here. Did the same thing on the other one. And to sew them on, I just snap them in and then cut, see how it kind of extends across the edge here. I just push it in a little bit and then that's where you sew. You can unsnap it if you want. Just like that. And I'm going to do just a quick top stitch along here to make sure it is secure. Okay, so now that we have our back marked here from when we attach the collar, we're going to take the two pieces of the collar and we're gonna sew them good side to good side from about a quarter inch in. Let me grab a marker to show you. So from about here, we're gonna sew up and across and down to about the same length, leaving the big curve on the bottom. So we're going to sew up and down like that. Okay, so we've sewn this together, and now we are going to trim little corners here, just like that. Same thing on the other side, just like that. And then we're going to flip this inside out. Now we have our collar. It's going to be a bit, it's going to want to pop out like that. That's fine. To attach it to this piece, we are going to line up the back marking that we made with the other back marking, just like this. Then we're going to fold it over like that. Flip it inside out. And then we're going to hold that. It's quite a difficult process, I will admit. 
folded like that and then we're going to fold this edge here and we're going to have it come over and meet where we can feel that other side so i'm going to do that all along this and i'm going to pin it and i'm going to show you how it looks okay so i've pinned it on and it should look something like this fold it in on the inside and i am going to top stitch around the bottom up the side and around the top and down that side all right so now that i have top stitched the collar on it should look something like this now i don't know why but i'm not very good at lining these things up properly so this is supposed to be a little bit longer so that you can attach a button here but i'm still gonna try and make it work and show you guys how to do that so first we're gonna get our snaps and i'm gonna put a bottom snap pretty close to the edge here and I'm gonna sew that on like that all right so I went ahead I added my two snaps and then I glued another one of my buttons on and this is how it looks if I can snap it so we've got the zipper on the flap these two little thingies the back and now we are pretty much done we're gonna put this this big guy to the side, and we are going to take out all of the sleeve pattern pieces. All right, so I have all of my sleeve pieces, and I have two of each, and they're mirroring each other. So like this, and like that, as we did for all the other um, times two pieces. And we are going to focus on this, these two pieces here. So we're gonna put the rest aside for now and we are going to do this everything i show you we're going to do twice for both sleeves i'm only going to show it to you once and then i'll show you both sleeves done so we're going to take one of these and then we're going to take one of these make sure that they match up um and that when you put the pattern piece on it you see all this stuff on it and it's not the flipped side so they're both for the same sleeve. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this top and we're gonna do the same thing to the bottom here. And we're gonna attach this where it says to attach it using these lines as marks. And we're gonna top stitch it across the top and across the bottom. All right, so we've top stitched on our patch cloth and it should look something like this. And now we're going to attach the other two sleeve sides. So we just need one of these and one of these. And we are going to line them up good side to good side. Just like that. And we're going to do um, one of those like the zigzag surging stitch. And we're going to attach both of those onto the jacket just like that good side to good side and do the same thing for the other sleeve now that our three arm sleeve pieces are put together with this kind of stitch um, we're gonna push against the tension and push it this way and then we're gonna top stitch on the middle sleeve piece and we're gonna do that for both sides and for both sleeves we have our sleeves pretty much done with the top stitching on the middle piece and the little patch for near the shoulder. And we're gonna put those aside and we're gonna bring these little guys into the frame and we're going to sew them together very similar to how we did the, the equalettes. <laughs> and we're gonna fold them over, good side to good side. And then we're going to sew that little V. And we're gonna do that for both of these. Now that we have these finished and pushed out, not really finished, um, we're gonna put these aside and wait until we actually attach the sleeves to the jacket, which we are going to do now. So to make sure you know which sleeve you're working with, you can take this piece or you can take this piece and if you line it up and it lines up with your pattern or with your sleeve, um, it might be a little easier to use these pieces because they're a little bit more individual and if they line up 
perfectly. Then you can look at the letters indicating, here we go, the letters indicating which side is which. So this is the back, towards the back of the jacket, and this is towards the front of the jacket. So what I'm going to do with this sleeve is make sure that this is facing the back. So here, and then this side will be facing the front. So when I put it on, I'm going to pin it like that. And I'm going to pin it all along here all the way to the edge here, and same thing on this side. Now what we're going to do, now that we've got our sleeves attached, like this, I'm gonna flip it back like that. We're gonna look at the ends of the sleeves, and these pattern pieces, this is the wrong sleeve, these pattern pieces will show you that you need to stop the sewing end. So what we're gonna do is put a little mark there, I've already done that with pen, and do the same thing on the other side. And then what we're gonna do is fold it under like we're top stitching, which we are, and you're gonna top stitch all the way up to the little mark that you made on both sides and on both sleeves. Next up, we're gonna bring back these little guys that I told you to put aside earlier. So, as the pattern piece shows, this is the back and this is the front. So this little corner here, faces the front, meaning this piece, because it's open like this, goes on this arm, and this one goes on this arm. So what we're gonna do is attach these. Similarly to the collar, you're gonna wanna fold the top edge like that, and then fold the bottom edge to match up, so that this piece is kind of like eating the sleeve. And then this edge, you're gonna wanna fold in and then you're gonna top stitch all around it. Now that the edge piece here is hemmed and attached, I went ahead and added my snaps so that this piece can go around and snap in like that, like a little sleeve, a little cuff. Um, on the pattern piece, it shows where to have the snaps. And I went ahead and did that to both of the sleeves. And now there are only two steps left until the jacket is finished. So we're gonna take the jacket, sprawled out like this, and we're gonna close it kind of like this, like you've flipped it inside out and you're about to zip it up inside out. And you're going to line up these edges all the way down the arm and you're gonna do one of these stitches all across here, all the way up until here, where we made our little fold. And you're gonna do that on this side, and then you're gonna do that on this side. After attaching the sides and the arms like this, your jacket should look something like this, and now we're just gonna flip it inside out. Now that it's all flipped outside right, inside out right, whatever, flipped around it should look something like this pretty much done now all we have to do is take our bottom piece it's called the belt cut that out and attach that okay so with this piece what we're going to do similarly to the collar and to these pieces is we're going to attach this the same way on all around the edge of the jacket and when you get to these edges like we did at the top for the zipper. You're gonna fold it in like this. And once you have the little end of the zipper piece folded in, then you can wrap around the bottom belt piece and get that sewn on. Finally, we have come to the end of this very, very long tutorial video. Um, like I said in the beginning, I'm not a professional um, seamstress, but I did my best, and I'm sure there's areas that I could have done better, but I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.